Hello. Welcome once again. In this video series we will see what Niagara is and how to use the Niagara system for creating excellent VFX. In the earlier videos in this series, we have seen the making of a Niagara emitter to emit a continuous ribbon style particle effect into the world. In this video, you will learn how to create the sparks effect in Niagara. Please like this video if you find it helpful and informative, and subscribe to our channel for newer updates and game development tutorials. In the starter content, there are several particle effects provided. To create the sparks effect included in the starter content, you will need to make three Niagara emitters as one for the fountain of sparks, one for the spark at the center, and one for the small stream of smoke rising from the fountain of sparks. You will start with the smoke emitter, because you can create it using a copy of an existing emitter. Now create the smoke emitter and the sparks system. Niagara emitters and systems are independent. Make a copy of the FX underscore smoke emitter you created in create a sprite particle effect in Niagara. Rename the duplicate emitter FX underscore sparks smoke. Now create a system for your spark effect. Now add the spark burst emitter to the system. Here, you will create the spark burst at the center of the effect. Right click in the system overview of your spark fountain system. Click add emitter and a list of existing emitters will display. In the list of available emitters, click view options to open a list of options. Check the boxes for show engine content and show plugin content. Now the list of available emitters will show all emitter templates included with Niagara. From the list of emitters, select the simple sprite burst template. The default name for the template emitter is simple sprite burst, but you can rename it. Click on the emitter name and the field becomes editable. Name the new emitter FX underscore spark burst. In Spark Burst Emitter, Edit Render Settings. The render group is last in the stack, but you need to change the material so that the effect displays the way it is supposed to. In the System Overview, click the render group to open it in the selection pane. Under Sprite Renderer, click the drop-down for material, and select the M underscore Spark material. Again in Spark Burst Emitter, edit the Emitter Update Settings. First, you will edit the modules in the Emitter Update group. These are behaviors that apply to the emitter, and that update each frame. In the system overview, click the emitter update group to open it in the selection panel. Remove the sprite burst instantaneous module by clicking the trash can icon. Now open the emitter state module. This module controls time and scalability for this emitter. Because you used the simple sprite burst template, the life cycle mode is set to self. Normally this is used for complete customization of emitter lifecycle logic for this specific emitter, but it is not needed for this effect. Click the drop down and set the lifecycle mode to system. This enables your system to calculate lifecycle settings, which usually optimizes performance. By default, the system loops infinitely on a 5 second interval. Click the plus sign for emitter update, and select spawning and then spawn rate. You can also type spawn in the search bar. Open the spawn rate module. Set the spawn rate to 8, and the spawn group to 1. In Spark Burst Emitter, edit the particle spawn settings. Next, you will edit the modules in the particle spawn group. These are behaviors that apply to particles when they first spawn. In the system overview, click the particle spawn group to open it in the selection panel. Under point attributes, set the lifetime to point 2. Set the mass mode to random in the minimum and maximum values. Minimum is 0.6. Maximum is 1.0. Under Sprite Attributes, expand Sprite Size. Set the Sprite Size Mode to Random Non-Uniform. Set the Sprite Size Minimum and Maximum Values as. Minimum X is 10, and Y is 10. And for Maximum X 30, and Y is 25. Click the box next to Sprite Rotation to enable it. Set the Sprite Rotation Mode to Direct Angle, Degrees. Click the drop-down next to the Value field, and select Dynamic Inputs and then Random Ranged Float. You can also type Random in the search bar. Set the Minimum and Maximum Values. Minimum is minus 10. And Maximum is 30. We always suggest checking how the change in values modifies the whole system. And based on your requirement do the changes. This makes you understand the system better. Click the plus sign for particle spawn, and select velocity and then add velocity. You can also type velocity in the search bar. Open the add velocity module. 
Click the drop down next to the value and select dynamic inputs and then random ranged vector. Set the velocity minimum and maximum as minimum x is 0, y is 0, z is 0 and maximum x is 10, y is 10, z is 10. Click the plus sign for particle spawn and select location and then sphere location. You can also type sphere in the search bar. Open the sphere location module. Set the sphere radius to 5. Now edit spark burst emitter in particle update settings. Here you will edit the modules in the particle update group. These behaviors apply to an emitter's particles and update each frame. In the system overview click the particle update group to open it in the selection panel. Open the scale color module. For scale RGB, set the RGB values. For scale alpha, set the alpha stops at 0.5 and 0.0. Click the plus sign icon for particle update and select size and then scale sprite size. You can also type size in the search bar. Open the scale sprite size module. Click the drop down next to the scale factor value field and select dynamic inputs and then random ranged vector 2D. Set the scale factor minimum and maximum. Minimum x is 1.0, y is 2.5. And for maximum x is 3.5, y is 5.0. Drag the spark fountain system into your level. When you make a particle effect, it is always a good idea to drag your system into your level. This gives you a chance to see every change and edit in context. Any changes you make to the system automatically propagate to the instance of the system in your level. Add the radial sparks emitter to the system. Right click in the system overview of your spark fountain system. Click Add Emitter, and a list of existing emitters will display. From the list of emitters, select the Simple Sprite Burst template. The default name for the template emitter is Simple Sprite Burst, but you can rename it. Click on the emitter name, and the field becomes editable. Name the new emitter FX underscore Sparks Radial. Now edit Radial Sparks Emitter. The render group is last in the stack, but you need to change the material so that the effect displays the way it is supposed to. In the system overview, click the render group to open it in the selection panel. Click the drop down for material and select the M underscore radial underscore gradient material. This material is part of the starter content. Click the drop down for alignment and select velocity aligned. Now you will edit radial sparks emitter in emitter update settings. First, you will edit the modules in the emitter update group. These are behaviors that apply to the emitter and that update each frame. In the system overview, click the emitter update group to open it in the selection panel. Remove the sprite burst instantaneous module by clicking the trash can icon. Click the plus sign icon for emitter update and select spawning and then spawn rate. You can also type spawn in the search bar. Now open the spawn rate module. Set the spawn rate to 500. Now edit the radial sparks emitter in particle spawn settings. Here you will edit the modules in the particle spawn group. These are behaviors that apply to particles when they first spawn. In the system overview, click the particle spawn group to open it in the selection panel. Open the initialize particle module. Under point attributes, expand lifetime. Set the lifetime mode to random in the minimum and maximum values as. Minimum is 0.2. And maximum is 0.7. Now expand mass. Set the mass mode to random in the minimum and maximum values as minimum is 0.3 and maximum is 0.6 now expand color set the color mode to direct set and the rgb values as red 2 green as 8 and blue is 20 and alpha 1 under sprite attributes set the sprite size mode to non-uniform set the following values as x is 0.25 y is 0.5 leave the sprite rotation mode as unset Click the plus sign icon for particle spawn and select mass and then calculate size and rotational inertia by mass. You can also type calculate in the search bar. Open the calculate size and rotational inertia by mass module. Under density, set density by material type to water. Under proportions, change the height to 0.5. Click the plus sign icon for particle spawn and select velocity and then add velocity. You can also type velocity in the search bar. Open the Add Velocity module. Click on the drop-down menu and select Dynamic Inputs then Random Range Vector.
Set the velocity minimum and maximum as, minimum x is minus 100, y as minus 100, z is 300. And maximum x is 90, y as 90, z as 500. Click on the button to show advance. Set the scale added velocity to x is 3, y as 4, z as 1. Click the plus sign icon for particle spawn, and select location, and then sphere location. You can also type sphere in the search bar. Open the sphere location module. Set the sphere radius to 2.0. Radial sparks emitter, edit the particle update settings now you will edit the modules in the particle update group. These behaviors apply to an emitter's particles and update each frame. In the system overview click the particle update group to open it in the selection panel. Click the plus sign icon for particle update, and select forces, and then gravity force. Because Niagara adds new modules to the bottom of the group stack, you will get an error stating, the module has unmet dependencies. That is because the gravity force module was placed after the solve forces and velocity module. Click the fix issue button to move the module and resolve the error. Open the gravity force module. Change the Z value to minus 4500. Click the plus sign icon for particle update, and select forces and then drag. Open the drag module. Set the drag value to 1.7. Click the plus sign for particle update and select collision and then collision. You can also type collision in the search bar. Open the collision module. Under bounds, set the restitution value to 0.4. Under friction, set the friction value to 0.2. Remove the scale color module by clicking the trash can icon. Click the plus sign and select size and then scale sprite size by speed. You can also type size in the search bar. Open the sprite size scale by speed module. Set the scale factor minimum and maximum as. Minimum x is 0 and y is 3. And maximum x is 0.5 and y is 6. Set the velocity threshold value to 3000. Congratulations! After following these steps, the spark fountain system in your level will produce a fountain of sparks. Hope this video helps you to initiate your journey into the creative world of Niagara. Thanks. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.